think the music stopped. That's weird. Hello? That is weird. Hey. Hey, that Nigel movie guy. Six minutes late, he's unsubbed. Well, I'm sorry to lose you. We're planning to... I'm not. Good riddance, Nigel. Yeah, hang on. I'm sending out the link. Good morning to our two viewers, me and Nigel. I got Skinny with me here today, and we're going to talk some indie funding. Indie crowdfunding comic books, or at least... I don't know. Something that's supposed to be a comic book. I'm seeing a lot of chop keys and stuff, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. And uh, it's uh, yeah, Dragon I'm Rage members, and we want to do some constructive criticism. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my frustration with this campaign. Uh, I It's got David Finch on it. David Finch is an amazing guy in the comic book scene because he's somebody that's really generous with his time. And uh, I really want to see this campaign succeed. And I got Skinny with me because he's run his own campaign successfully. I think he's got a unique perspective to look at it. Then we're going to talk about, I just found this this morning. I want to talk a little bit about it and give him some free publicity if he's interested. Or not. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. And uh, Starlight Cats is out there. He needs no help from us. But I want to talk a little bit about it because it's about cats and I love cats. And, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. And uh, as luck would have it, uh, there's a new image came out, which looks pretty cool. And, uh, oh, hello, Pickles. Pickles, if you'd like to join us, I can send you the link. Unless you would rather not, Skin. I think he's a, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. We can talk about poop. We can talk about poop. Yeah. But uh, I would like to preface this. Like you said, um, as far as these campaigns go, we're not being hateful or anything. It's just to say this bluntly, artists and writers typically fucking suck at marketing. <laughs> and we're just trying to give a little bit of constructive criticism. I, I I still like the way this book looks, but this campaign is kind of a mess, man. Pickles is from England. Yeah, it is kind of a mess. And um, yeah, I think we can offer some uh, some help. And uh, if you get, if uh, I think Jimmy Reyes, I, I found the book through Jimmy Reyes and Page One Comics. And uh, he's, he's got a great channel and he helps people out. So we want to help him out a little bit. Just uh, some, you guys, Jimmy Reyes and Page One Comics probably haven't heard of us. And that's fine. But, um, you know, we're going to offer the criticism. They can take it or leave it. And, uh, hey, HG. Well, it's not just for who's ever running. I was going to say, it's not for who's ever just running the campaigns that we're taking. This is for anybody else as well. Yeah, this anybody can benefit from what we're going to talk about. But, uh, yeah, uh sure. let's see. So, uh, I think the funniest thing on this campaign, and I, I mean this good heartedly, is, uh, this trailer. Uh, I guess we'll play it, see, see what happens. So that's cool. It's got some like fiery stuff. Can you pause that, Mecca? All right. That's one of my biggest problems with it right there is that text, you can't, you have to strain to see it. Because if you notice the color of it is pretty much the same color as the character in the background. You, you don't want that. You, they really needed to at least put like, I don't know, some kind of outline around that font, something to make it pop out and more legible. Yeah. Because honestly, I'm straining trying to read that. It is. Uh, it does blend in with kind of her like the upper and the middle torso. It's like it's really muddy, like you say. And then then you got this like black and white interior page over here, which it just doesn't 
you actually make the interior art look a lot worse throwing it against these colors like that. According to the campaign, the whole book's supposed to be in color. I think it's 32 pages all in all. Yeah, it says but, 32 color pages right there. But if it's going to be a color book, why don't you have any color pages to show off? That just strikes yeah. me as odd. Yeah. Well, I think the colorist is working on it now. It sounds like the book's mostly completed, which is good. And uh, we'll, uh, HG, the tiers are going for, I think the opening tier is $20 for the comic book. I'll, I'll show that in a second. Um, let's keep going with this real quick. So it's, the other thing is, it, like, a, it, the music suits the time period quite a bit. Hey, Doug Tenapel, good morning, man. Good to have you. Uh, it's supposed to be in color. We should see color pages. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I agree with uh, Skinny and uh, Pocket Jacks on that. See, another interior. see, he's got more interior pages in this video than he does on the actual uh, campaign page. But uh, let's finish this up real quick. Yeah. Uh, before we get into all the character design is pretty cool. I really like the simple stuff. And for a feminine, uh, for a female lead, it's you know, she's got believable muscle to swing that sword around, I guess. What the that hell was that? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I was I, talking to you about this earlier. I think <laughs> it would have been far better to just have the artist draw like four different images of a dragon, like approaching the page, the, yeah. the reader. And then just kind of zoom in and transition between those four pages. That would have looked substantially better because that CGI dragon, man. Oof. Uh, well, like, and why does freaking everything stop abruptly? Right. That that's just weird. Like it's never in center frame either. It just it kind of comes in at a weird angle. It's not the focus of the thing, and then it kind of just like drifts off to the side. Yeah, it doesn't even look like it bites at you know the viewer. Like you would think it would, like you know how right. some shots have like something approaching the screen and then you like go into its mouth or whatever. But it yeah, doesn't it, even do that. It's odd. It it is really odd, and uh, I wonder what they spent on this. I think that the CGI could have been done some more. <laughs> yeah, it's it's rough. You <laughs> HG. Yeah. But yeah, like uh, uh, it should have like bit at the audience or something. It, but it just kind of like goes off and does its own thing on the screen. So it's it's weird. And the oddest thing is, it's just so many bells and whistles. When this art for the book looks fantastic, like this could sell itself. You don't need all this extra nonsense. Yeah. Well, like uh, David Finch is involved with this, and that's how I heard about this project. Dave Finch does a uh, Monday night he does a drawing stream where uh, he just draws a character, talks about his process. People end up asking him questions, and he he donates his time. He's really generous, so I I really want to support the project just because you know people like that in the comics industry is a really good thing to have. Black and white, yeah, the black and whites are solid. And I'll talk about that in a second because. We've got some fantastic artwork here, but then uh, before you ever get to the black and whites, you got face mask, t-shirt, ball cap, beanie, all these tchotchkes and stuff, and I really just want to see what I'm buying with with the art. Here's the art, by the way. So you got four, four pieces of tchotchkes right here, and then you get to the interior pages. Like I, st I said this to Skinny. Are you running a comic book, Indiegogo, or are you doing an Etsy store? Yeah, and look at the way the tiers are set up towards the top, too. Right, so oh, we got... Wait, no, on mobile, they're up top. But, like, see, if you scroll down, you do have the featured perk, which is cool. But then you have, like, the feet of dragon. You have, like, a mask. This is, yeah, this is just a donation if you want to give five bucks to the campaign which is cool you know some people want to do that they can't afford the thing well but, it's yeah, odd though because there's already a donation feature right uh, then, but uh, it's just weird you scroll through all this stuff before you even get to the book right the the first 
the first uh, perk you get something for is the Dragon Rage Mask, which a lot of campaigns are doing this, and it sort of looks like a dragon, I guess. Zero claimed. It's just a mask. 15 bucks. Then finally you get to the book. Jimmy Reyes cover. Variant cover of Armas Jimmy Reyes. And I guess, let's see. Issue one, Reyes cover. So, But why aren't they showing the cover there? I don't think he's done it yet. And then, okay, so you get one cover by Jimmy Reyes, and then you go right back to the tchotchkes. So you get the crew neck t-shirt, $20. So now you got a choice between the book or a t-shirt. How much is shipping on this, by the way? Because this is just a 32-page book. This isn't like a graphic novel or anything. It's pretty standard. Let's see. Let me, uh, let me pull this. Oh, I got planes. Hold on. <laughs> oh, the shipping's really good on this, actually. It's only five bucks. Yeah, that isn't bad, but my question is, is the $20 price tag, is this paying for all the tchotchkes? No, you get... See, the, all the tchotchkes they want 20 bucks for. Ball caps, 20 bucks. T-shirts, 20 bucks. Beanies, 20 bucks. Well, what I meant was, are they offsetting the cost? Like, if a bunch of people just buy the book, like, and they're just stuck with a bunch of t-shirts and masks and beanies. No, I think when you when you get the twenty dollars book, you just get the book. You don't get any of the chopsticks with it. But twenty dollars, man. I mean, twenty five dollars for a thirty two page book is just that's a bit much for me, man. It is a bit rich, I guess. I mean, I, I'd much rather them wait a couple months and do a forty eight page book. Because it does look I mean, pretty. it does look like a fantastic book, but for that same price point, you know, I could go with Doug's book, you know, Earthworm Jim 2, which is currently funding right now, I think. Or did it close yet? Uh, I think he's getting ready to do the Indiegogo. Okay. Uh, what is a tchotchke? A tchotchke is uh, stuff on a comic book campaign in this setting that we're talking about that isn't the comic book. So... T-shirts, ball caps, beanies, that kind of thing is a tchotchke. Or at least in this uh, context and vernacular. But he also has a print set, which is pretty cool. And that's some color artwork there, which is... um. Oh, okay, this must be the uh, Reyes cover right here. I think we missed that earlier. Oh, that should have been on the uh, park uh, image. Right. Oh, yeah, here it is. I mean, I'm not going to buy something if I don't know what it looks like. So there's the Jimmy Reyes variant cover, which is right there. Looks really great, actually. Interior artist cover. So that's another question I have. Did Jimmy Reyes draw this? Yeah, uh, because they actually have the uh, David Finch cover. Because they also offer the version uh, variant the of it as well. So I think I think it, this could be streamlined. Yeah, like I think they could have cleaned it up a little bit by taking like the beanies and the face masks and the t-shirts, use them as add-ons for your campaign. Don't don't have a tier just for that item because on Indiegogo when you check out, you can select these different add-ons to add on, and that's what those things are kind of better suited for. It just kind of bogs everything down because. Like we pointed out earlier, we had to scroll down quite a bit before we actually found the book. Yeah, that's it's. Uh, hey, HG, if you got some links, post it up, brother. Should still have the, still have the uh, mod mod stuff on my channel. Appreciate you. Uh, and if you put the link up, I'll check that out uh, towards the end of the show, definitely. But um, yeah. So, okay. So that's the frustrating thing. It's it's you got all these perks and then. Okay, we finally get to the book, which is good, but then right back to the tchotchkes with the t-shirt, all that print set. Yeah, because they have a ball cap, a beanie, a mask, a t-shirt. Yeah, like uh, Joe Willis cover. I don't know who Joe Willis is, but art looks good on it. And this is another issue one Willis cover. Then a uh, sketch cover, blank sketch cover, $25. Cool. 
David Finch cover is thirty dollars. Finch Reyes print combo. Oh, okay, that's the posters. Virgin cover. The Finch Virgin cover. That's cool. And all four covers. So it's almost like you have to search to make sure you're not ordering any of this other stuff if you want to get the comic book. Yeah. But my, one of my biggest questions is if, like, the T-shirt and this other stuff, uh, you know, that's cool, but why aren't they included with the book? Why, why are you having them sold completely separately? Well, I've, it's, I, it's haven't a strange Indiegogo. I haven't done an Indiegogo before, but from your experience, you could set all the stuff up as an add-on perk when you check out, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I know I got uh, the extra, which is the Blacklight poster included with my book, but it comes with my book. Right. Um, I think I only, I only have a handful of tiers, too, because I got, like, the Grave Robber, um, the digital, just the plain physical, physical on a poster, and then two of everything, and then the one with the uh, an original page. That's it. Like, you don't, you don't want to bog people down. Now, if I were going to do t-shirts and whatnot, like I said, I would have done it as like an add-on. Like, add this to your order for an extra, you know, 20 bucks. Right. That's that. That's the purpose of it. That's what it's for. Well, he, he but, I mean, this on. is a great looking book. I don't mean to shit on it. I just, this campaign confuses me. <laughs> yeah, and I think we can uh, offer some constructive criticism. He calls it add-ons here, but you know the other thing that I woke up this morning, I saw the saw this campaign and went live, and uh, I started reading this pitch, and I was just like, "Are these people after my money or not?" Because I'm I'm actually like a little like, "What are you guys doing?" So let me let me read it what? out. Yeah, read it out. Uh, welcome, I'm Dave Philpot, writer for Dragon Rage, and one of the big brains behind Page One Comics. Not long ago, I was talking to Jimmy Reyes, you know, the artist for Dragon Rage and other big brain behind Page One Comics, about an idea he had. You see, he thought, what if there was a girl who could turn into a dragon, right? And she predicts the village she lives in, but she was to fight, uh, but she has to fight another dragon who is attacking her village, who may or may not be her father. And I was like, okay. And I said, yeah, Dragon Rage, a cradle of embers. <laughs> there is so much wrong with that pitch right there. Uh, for one, <laughs> they give away a really good surprise plot point that they could have like pulled on the readers. Uh, I mean, you didn't walk into Empire with where it says on the poster, find out that Vader's Luke's father. Like, no. Uh, right. That's not how that ha that's not how that stuff works. Um you need to leave some mystery for your readers. Uh, I'm not going to bring up plot points about my book, but I kept my pitch very basic. It gives you a general idea of what the book is about, but it doesn't give a lot away either. Because you want that mystery, you want that intrigue. Because if you give all that away, like right off on your pitch, oh, hey, she turns into a dragon. She fights another dragon. That's probably her father. Okay, well, why should I invest in this if I already know what's going to happen? But, like, the pitch should have read something like, let's just call the Karen, let's say, Melanie. Uh, just say something short and sweet. Uh, Melanie has the power to transform into a dragon. She uses this to protect her village from dark forces. Yeah. That's it. Don't even bring up the other dragon or that it might be her father. Let the readers discover that as they're reading your book. Let them be surprised. Yeah, and you know, it's not only that, which makes a lot of sense, Skinny, but just the tone mm -hmm. of this. Like, a what if is a good idea for a prompt, but for the guy writing it to say, I was like, okay. So well, that sounds more like a pitch I would I would give to my artists like privately. Well, it's like, I was like, okay. Well, I saw your campaign and I was like, okay. Like, how am I supposed to get excited about that? <laughs> Clark Jacks, I don't mind giving away plot. I there's a lot more to the book than a surprise. Well, that's a good point. 
That is a fair point, but you got to draw a line somewhere, though, because you, I don't know. I'm weird. Tomato, tomato, different well, strokes just, and all that. It's just such a weird, like, uh, tone to the to the campaign, you know? There's so much weirdness about it. You know, you got the CGI dragon, you got all the t-shirts, and, you know, the page one comics logo is a lot bigger than the logo for the actual comic book, which may be part of the branding, but uh, I was like, okay, just I don't know if I'd ever try to sell somebody a story that uh, that lackadaisical. I guess it's just not a very enthusiastic way to pitch your book. I think and it's a bit odd to like advertise it something too, like with the page one comics, because I've never heard of them. I looked them up. As far as I know, they just started out, and that's not really the place. Like they haven't established themselves. I don't know why they're even bringing up the name yet. Yeah, like on page one, like if you, like let's say my imprint is Skinny's Comics. Uh, nothing on my campaign says anything about that. Now, when I get like two or three books into it, I, you know, my campaign may say, you know, the newest book from Skinny's Comics or whatever. All oh, this cocksucker. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> And, you know, I think, um, you know, the the girl turning into a dragon, that's cool. You know, I could read a comic book about that. It's definitely an interesting idea. I like it. I just, I like the idea for the book. I like how the book works, but this campaign gives me a headache. <laughs> I just, I would rather back a comic book than all, I have zero interest in ever wearing a face mask with this image on it. It's just, it's kind of garish. And it, it's fun to, you know, build your comic book up by branding and stuff. But this just seems it's the first time comic book. If I wore this T-shirt out, people would be like, oh, that's cool artwork. But, you know, I, I don't know what that's from. Oh, it's from Dragon Rate, the comic book I just backed on Indiegogo. Oh, is that like a long running thing? No, it's a first time effort. You know, I, I just don't understand. I just couldn't get behind that, honestly. Consider it this way, too. Like... Let's just say you wanted all the tchotchkes and the book and the prints. You're having to separately back about, you know, six or seven different tiers, all of which you're paying shipping independently on them just to get all the items you want. Really? When it should be just one solid transaction. Well, yeah, there's um, so the Dragon Clan is four covers here. You can get all that together, but there's no similar perk for all the tchotchkes. Yeah, there's, there's no get a beanie in the book. Nothing like that. And like I said, you can't just stack tiers onto each other and then check out all at once. What you're going to have to do is you're gonna, if you want to get all that stuff, you're going to have to back the face mask, do all that nonsense, come back to the page, back the next tier for the beanie, do all that, come back for the t-shirt, and so on and so forth. And it's strange that they would have just two 8 by 11 prints for $20 as well that's you you also got to think about what 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 it, what would a customer buy and i don't think anybody's just going to buy it unless they're at a con or they have like a signing at their comic shop i don't think anybody's going to indiegogo to back a tier where they just get two eight by eleven prints for twenty dollars yeah why isn't that something i could add on to getting the actual comic book. Yeah, that, that's why I got so interested in doing a show on this this morning is because I want to support comic books. And what I'm seeing from this campaign is a lot of uh, t-shirts, beanie, masks, all that. That's like stuff where I'm passing somebody on the side of the road and I, I get, you know, hey, buy this, buy that. No, 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 no. I'm just here for the comic book, sir. But maybe they do have an audience. Maybe there's a lot of people that are going to buy this stuff. I don't know. But... You know, it's like being assaulted at a fair with all this, and uh, I don't want that. Um, you still there, Skinny? Hello? I'm here. I just yeah. had a plane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they, they get back to the story. What's it about? Well, like Jimmy said, it's about a girl named Nuri who can turn into a dragon. See, well, it's like Jimmy said. Well, I already forgot because there's so much to this campaign, you know, who was talking about this. That should have been the first thing on the page, right there. Right. Yeah. What's it about? Well, like Jimmy said, uh, Nuri, see a girl named Nuri who could turn into a dragon. 
She was an orphan and a field servant for the kingdom of Blackcliff. Where's Blackcliff? Is this on another planet or is this an Earth? Like, what's going on? Now she's a young woman adjusting to a more comfortable lifestyle as a weapon of the monarchy. That's cool. But the surrounding kingdoms don't want to live in the shadow of a dragon. And when Nuri begins to learn the truth about her past, she may be a danger. She realizes she may be a danger to the very people she's trying to protect. So that should have been at the beginning of the campaign. Yeah. I didn't even see that part. Like, that should have been the pitch from the get-go. That should have been up top, front, and center. That should have been the first thing people <laughs> read so they can know what this book is about, what to expect from this book. Like, it's good to be like, hey, that here's a little bit about the writer and the artist and yada, yada, yada. It's good to do that on the campaign. But talk about the actual book first. And then you can get to all that stuff later because I can't tell you how many campaigns I've looked at where they were just talking about themselves for like three or four paragraphs. And I'm like, well, I want to know about the book. And I keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And then I'm like, yeah. oh, finally, they're talking about the book. Well, and like, uh, like they say here, uh, most important of all dragons. I mean, the what was the free thing that you just passed up? Free. So the first 30 backers get free bonus goodies, such as a button sticker and trading card. Next 31 to 200 backers get a free Dragon Rage pre-launch edition collector's trading card. Plus, uh, okay. the book contains a free additional backup story by David Phil. Okay, so... Now, is that limited to the first 30, or is that for everybody? The first, the first 30 backers get button, sticker, and trading card. So Yeah, but I'm talking about the, the, the one you've got highlighted. Well, that's what I'm wondering. So is this, is this part of the page count? I really couldn't tell you. I couldn't either. Is it an ash can? I don't know. Now, what is this ash ons Okay. See, are, are these add-ons for the campaign, or are they separate tiers? I'm, I'm really confused now. Yeah. I just... If, if this, you... This might be the most negative thing I say today, but this face mask is ugly. Eh, I don't like masks. I don't like it either. I'll wear one when I absolutely have to. I do like the, the but. yeah. I do like the the logo on the ball cap. You know the page page one. You know the turning thing. That's cool. They do have a nice logo. I'll give them yeah. credit for that because it looks like a P and a zero. If you hadn't noticed, that, that's actually really yeah intuitive. That's, yeah, that's that's clever, man. You need to get whoever designed this on the rest of the campaign. Interior now the interior art looks really good. It does. And David Finch, man, that I've been watching his streams, and uh, if you haven't seen his, I mean, every Monday night he does. Um, he just picks a character and draws it, and uh, just spends like two hours talking to the chat. And that's why I got so interested in this campaign in the first place, because like I said, that David Finch is really, really good dude in comics, man. He's so generous with his time. So uh, I hope. Uh, if we spend an hour talking about this campaign, we could help him out because yeah, you know, I want to see more guys like that in comics. Yeah, but um, the interior art looks good. The dragon looks really cool. I don't know if the dragon is her or if it's her companion though. But that's uh, that's mostly confused because of the pitch. Like it's yeah, because it's actually turning for the dragon. Yeah, what does she need a sword for if she's a dragon? I don't know. Maybe dragons like to use swords. <laughs> Dragon sword. Yeah. Why should you care? So I think this is this is the blurb for us, man. So I mean, look at the artwork. Jimmy has really outdone himself, evoking the hyper detailed style of your favorite '90s comics, but with a flavor all of his own. And the story is packed with 32 full colored pages of action and fighting, dashing young men and beautiful women, a monstrous villain, and most important of all, dragons. 
And besides all that, look at the talent we're bringing you. We have superstar colors to Andrew Dalhouse in the house. Uh, that's a little clumsy. Dollhouse in the house. Yeah, that's a bit odd. It doesn't yeah. really roll off very well. No, I, I had to stop for a second. Um, you've loved his gorgeous artwork on several DC pages from Batman to Wonder Woman. Color palette he's bringing to Dragon Rage is beyond amazing. I bet his Crayola game was strong back in the day. That is kind of funny. It's it's a little too cute for me. <laughs> but it is funny. And, oh, and did we mention who penciled our cover? He's only rock star, funny book legend David Finch. That's right. The man himself blessed us with this absolutely stunning cover. Exclusive to the Indiegogo campaign. You heard me. This will be one of the rarest Finch covers around, and we've got it. So that's not bad. But, uh, you know, Crayola. So what about the what do we need thing? I'm curious about that. All right. So first, take a look at the goodies we have in our tier packages. Check out the add-on perks available for each tier. Go ahead. Look at it. Badass, right? And get this. We're offering an exclusive David Finch cover. Beautiful coloring by Andrew Dalhouse. Amazing pencils and inks by Jimmy Reyes and a pretty damn decent story. See, why are you pitching this as decent story? Yeah, like, the, it, you need to say it's an amazing story. It's a fantastic story. It will... Change the right. way you poop forever. Like something. Don't say decent. Yeah. Decent like, something I would pay maybe two dollars for. Or decent something I get out of the dollar bin. Not right. decent story. Not and, bucks for. Well, and then he's talking about I was like, okay. Like, are they forcing this dude to write the story or what? Like he's in his locked closet and they're just feeding him by slapping pancakes on their door. Yeah, it's just Guys, come on, man. You guys are, there's so much talent involved with this project, and it's good to be humble, but this is just a little too self deprecating, I think. It's just weird. Like, uh, like if, like if, uh, like self confidence issues, maybe. I don't know. Like, you want uh, my dollars don't come out of my wallet with that kind of trepidation, you know? There's a lot of people asking for money. Back, no it's got, a, it. it's no. got a decent story. We'll press it. I don't back decent stories. I back amazing ones. So try again. <laughs> what are we going to do with that money, you ask? We're going to pay our creative team. That's good. Now, if you guys weren't going to pay your creative team, I'd have questions. Uh, that kind of goes without saying, but okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to place a premier quality comic book in your hands. And here's the best part. We're going to fund the launch of Page One Comics. Hmm, interesting. So they're basically doing what Mitch should have done. Kyrie Book Not Two. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's all right. <laughs> That's all right. I'm sold. But it, it is strange that he would, whoever wrote this, I don't know who wrote this, but they would be like, oh, yeah, the amazing art, uh, the fantastic colors, uh, this glorious, you know, cover by the Honorable David Finch, and it's got a decent story. Like, what? Like, I wonder if the artist wrote all this and he just has an axe to grind with the writer because he's like just really pissed off because he's had to correct too many panels and he's like, oh yeah, and the story's decent. Fuck that guy. Well, it reminds me of this old meme. Frosted Flakes versus Frosty Corn Flakes. They're right! Versus, they yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> Right now we're looking at the campaign version of Day I... Frosty cord <laughs> uh, I, I like Preston's answer to what he's going to do with the money. Strippers got kids that need to eat. Yeah, well, hey. They I do. Know. That's true. Kids got to eat. You know, hardworking single mothers everywhere need our support. Uh, stretch goals. Campaign exclusive. Two-sided. Two-by-five. Three-by-five. Sketch card. One side printed with David French cover art, 
pencils. The other side, blank matte surface for sketching. So it's All a right. trading card. That's cool. And uh, fifteen thousand dollars stretch gold. It's a campaign exclusive signed eleven by seventeen print. So that just comes free or what? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. This two sided sketch card is really throwing me off because it says one side printed with David Finch cover art pencils. The other side is a blank matte surface for sketching. So you don't even get nobody even sketches anything on there for you, which is just that's odd. Yeah. It's like, hey, here's a blank piece of paper you can draw on. I don't know, man. The way they got this set up is so freaking weird. I'm just. All right. So what's the catch? Well, honestly, not much. Unlike many campaigns, we have a book that is mostly complete. That's good. Jimmy has a handful of pages left to render. And the magnificent Mr. Dollhouse is coloring pages for us as we speak. Working with the same reputable company printed our free preview, so unless the various institutions of parcel delivery all collapse at once, you're getting what you paid for. So where's the free preview at? Yeah, that, that should be linked on there somewhere. Yeah. So what are you waiting for? Right. Pick a tier that works best for you. We'll send you a sexy, shiny new comic, along with extras you've chosen. All for a ridiculously low backing contribution. Don't forget to collect the add-on perks. Your campaign is the ad uh, add-on perks. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, so I'm guessing I don't want to back it because I don't have the money. I mean, I do like the art. I'm not saying yeah. that. But if I had the money, I'd, I'd back it just to see if I can actually use these add-ons or if they're still just single tiers because it's just strange that they would have them listed as single tiers and have them as add-ons like i don't think anybody's gonna just buy a face mask no well let's i mean have they sold any of the chocolates yeah zero claimed let's see uh frequently asked questions oh they didn't even fill this out at all really Besides they just did the two Besides comics, we're offering face masks, beanie caps, baseball caps, and full color prints. This, see, that's the other thing that bothers me. Your campaign should never be besides comics. It should be, here's a comic. I want to back a comic. We're not going to talk about Guinevere Preston because it's just decent. We yeah, don't we, don't, talk about we don't talk about just decent. We talk about amazing. <laughs> Speaking of amazing, let's talk about a campaign we could probably learn something from. Oh, shit. So this is your campaign, and we're going to talk about this because we think that we could maybe help you guys out and give us a little press, too. So take it or leave it. It's page one. If you guys see our video and you don't like it, I understand. You know, we're, Maybe we're a little harsh, but I think we could... Uh, Help you out with some stuff. So no, we're not being hateful. The book does look great. I'm just some people yeah. need to know what not to do because this stuff, as a customer myself, that some of this stuff turns me away, and it's constructive criticism. I'm not just shitting on it. I'm giving advice on how to fix these issues too. Yeah, try and, to be uh, helpful, damn it. Yeah, and as as a gesture of good faith, I'm going to back this thing, but not on this. Uh, tab. I don't want you guys to see my stuff. I'm going to go ahead and back one of these things. But anyway, let's talk about uh, Otis Stein. Take it away. Okay. Uh, when Otis resorts to making moonshine, he makes a grave mistake that costs him his life. Seeing Otis's lifeless body the now widowed Mary tries to bring him back using ancient magic, but not everything is as it seems, and dark forces gather in the shadows. Love, sadness, death, and the macabre await you within the pages of Otis Stein. And that's what I was talking about before, too, where you need to have your all your statements right there, front and center. Because after I say that, that's when I can get into all the other bullshit. Well, not that it's bullshit, but you know what I mean. 
you got a featured perk up here, which is you get Lone Wolf, Otis Stein, poster, digital PDF, and exclusive swag. Oh, there's yeah, there's been an update to that, too. Um, Michael Johnstone uh, has actually offered me to give away PDFs of th his book, Thrasher's number one and two as well. So they'll also get that. I just can't edit perks. So it won't say it, but it's there in the updates. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, starting with a digital PDF, four bucks. And you get a physical for six. Yeah. No tchotchkes. I mean, I w I'd love to do like t-shirts and stuff, but I'm going to wait on that first. I, I want to see if this actually takes off. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. And you're up to 1900 bucks, man. It's really good. Yeah. I'm so damn happy, man. I'm very thankful for anybody who's backed this book. They're going to like it. It's a fantastic story. It ain't all right. <laughs> they all right. <laughs> I think I did kind of get close to doing that a little bit. Like the other day when I promoted the book on Twitter and I'm like, check out my book. It's got like pictures and words and shit. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see that. And uh, just to let you guys know, I did just back this uh, Dragon Rage book. I got the, Hey, Eric Hawkins. I, uh, I got the David Finch cover. So uh, I'm excited to help. I hope this video, if you guys find this, that you think it was a, uh, helpful to your campaign and if you guys haven't checked it out yet check out dragon rage a cradle of embers on indiegogo uh let me put the link to that actually yeah i mean it, it does look like a fantastic book i hate that you know we might be shitting on it but no i i didn't mean this uh video to be other than anything other than constructive and uh like i said i backed it i think it looks fantastic i just i don't, I don't want to see comic books go the way of like uh street side salesman where they just sell a bunch of crap and you have to sift through all this nonsense just to get a comic book, you know? Yeah. I just want a comic book. I'd never want to buy a t-shirt from you. I never want to buy a, a COVID mask. Definitely. Just want a comic book. And if I ever do a comic book myself, there's not going to be anything other than maybe a uh, wife beater with the logo on it because you know, Wow. But uh let me Yeah, see. you should do a wife beater and just says rule of thumb on it. Some people will get that joke. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I can't do that. Oh look, 14 20, 34 backers, 30 days left. So guys, check out Dragon Rage. I think there's a fantastic book here if you can get past the tchotchkes. Yeah. And uh let's talk about some other books here. Um Another one I saw come up today was uh, this thing called War Party. You seen this? No, I have not. So I got interested in this because uh, it has a... Oh, shit. They done fucked up. They have uh, a werewolf. taboo right there up at the top, man. What happened? Last of the Mohicans meets the Howling. You never do that. Never. Don't, don't do that. Why is that? Because you want to sell your own work. You don't want to rely on somebody else's IP. Like, I think, well, Tim and I were talking about it. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff suited for, like, an elevator pitch when you're talking to a bunch of corporate fuckwits who have don't have a creative bone in their body. But you never want to compare your work to something that's already pre-existing because then people are going to be like, well, I'll just watch that instead. Yeah. But even saying that, it really doesn't say a whole lot when you say Last of the Mohicans meets the Howling. Well, I don't know what the Howling is. Oh, it's a fantastic werewolf movie. I think it's got oh, okay. Jack Nicholson in it, too. Yeah, let's see here. We got a. Uh, you got like a it. You need to watch it. The art looks really good on this. So they have like were bears and werewolves and. Were cheetahs? Were crocodiles and were cheetahs? Um, Is that a crocodile? Yeah, I think that's a were crocodile and a were eagle. Were eagle? Yeah. You that's just kind of funny because of football. 
Yeah. Because everybody's <laughs> screaming War Eagle down here. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw them up by saying Wear Eagle every once in a while. But that does look cool. I like that idea. Yeah. About War Party. After their families are killed during the French and Indian War and the surviving child is captured, a group of colonial fighters organize a rescue when they receive shape-shifting powers from an ancient tribe. Wolf, bear, eagle, jaguar, and gator all team up in an unlikely elite alliance against the French, the British, and their native allies. That's just that's just comic book to me, man. That's just, like, I'm in. <laughs> that sounds cool. Yeah. And I like how it's, like, right there up at the top. Yep. Like, I didn't have, we didn't have to scroll through a bunch of bullshit to actually get what the story is. Oh, hell yeah. Look and they that. didn't say it's decent, right? Like if you're gonna if you're gonna have a, like people take on the powers of wolf, bear, eagle, jaguar, and gators to fight the British, that's all you need to say. I'm in. I'm gonna buy your book. It's a fantasy adventure tale set in a brutal historical period. See, that's the other thing too. I was gonna ask: Is this a modern day story, right. or is it? It's a. What's period. the six issues autographed? I mean, is that are those variants or? So, so I looked at this before we went live, and uh, he wants to do six issue series out of this. It's six issues, total of 140 pages. But what you're buying here is only the first issue, and each what? issue is 22 to 30 pages of story and arc. So I'm only so it. It's advertised as a six issue set, but I'm only getting one. Yeah. What? What? Let's see. All right. So how much of the War Party series is completed? I started working on this book two years ago, and four issues are completed. I'm working on issue five right now. Oh, so you are getting the six issues at once, right? Like the six issues autographed, the complete set. So that's six floppies right there. Well, let's see. Complete set. So this perk says six issues autographed, 25 bucks. Receive all issues in the miniseries, each signed by author. The entire set will be shipped together. Estimated shipping June of next year. Well, that's only like, what, like a little over $4 a book? That's not bad. Yeah. yeah. We'll and see. that's, what did he say, 140 pages? Total, yeah. And that's pretty much, I mean, that Dragon Rage book was only 32 pages, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, 32 pages and uh, 20 bucks to get into that thing. That's not a bad price point at all. I can get behind that. That's, that's actually very inexpensive if you think about it. What's the shipping on it? Uh, let me check on another page. Let's see. Shipping on the complete set. Uh, Ten bucks. No, that's not too bad. That's yeah, not too bad. I'm just wondering. So, so he's going to wait until June to ship it out, which is fine. He's got four out of the six books completed. And on funding, he's going to have six issues sent out to you. So shipping and everything, you know, added on to it, you're paying about what five eighty three a book, which isn't bad at all. That's that's competing with comic uh, mainstream prices right now because I think their books are like four ninety nine and five ninety nine. Yeah, depending on which one you pick up. Yeah, and art looks good, and I like the fact that he's already got four issues done. He's working mm -hmm. on five and six right now. Yeah. And he seems like he engages with uh, his comments pretty well. Uh, how long has this campaign been up? Uh, 29 days left. Okay, so he probably set it for 30 days, so it's been up for about a day. Yeah, he's getting some traction, 1265. That's good. He's been in comics since 1992. I've never heard of you. Why? Self-published a historical comic book series in 1992 at the age of 17. It was distributed through Diamond and ran for nine issues. Published and again in 2008 with Cleburne, a graphic novel, and 2010 with my humor book, humor book Holidays. Market has always been very niche with the bulk of my readers outside of comics. Uh, see, so his break from comics was producing live theater and animation. So 
comics aren't the only artistic endeavor. Started work on the book two years ago. Four issues are completed. Working on five right now. What is your goal with Work Party? To tell an entertaining story with the best art I can create. See, I like that. The best art I can create. That's that's what I want to hear out of. And he says comments. it's an entertaining story, not it's a decent story. Yeah. There are other stories and other time periods to plan to explore with the character of Diane. It has some violence and minor nudity, but I would say it's appropriate for 13 and up. And it's a it's a party of two, a team of two for this book. He writes pencils, inks, and letters. The book colors are provided by Jay Brown with one variant cover. You mean James Brown does colors? I thought he was dead. <laughs> Watch me. That's really great, man. Like, I want to back this book. Like, yeah. it's a pretty Dragon easy Rage look good, but this one actually sold me 100% because this guy clearly knows what he's doing. He knows how to sell somebody on a product. Yeah, he's already got finished product and he's enthusiastic about it. And it's, it's really a, a, this is another case of a, you know, a Transformer kind of character. A wear character where you know Dragon Rage had a transforming uh, Dragon Woman, and this has like a team of transforming wear people, which is cool. But this pitch really nails it, man. Yeah, I like that pitch. It doesn't give a ton away either, but it, it tells me just enough to get me interested in the story. Yeah, it's very cool, and it sounds like there's an add-on for a complete motion comic too. And a poster. That's pretty cool. See, now the motion comic, that is really neat. Because that's something I've been wanting. That's something I'm <laughs> yeah, kind of going to try to do once yeah. the motion fills. I want to launch it digitally. Uh, well, not launch it as in crowdfund it. But eventually, I want to do like all the issues as they come out and put them up as motion comics on my channel. That'd be fun. But then people get free comics, huh? I mean, yeah, they get free digitals, but there's plenty of people like me out there who like I want the physical. Yeah. Well, let's 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 talk about uh I'm gonna show Preston's campaign because he's really got I think Preston's somebody who's really got the uh some of the issues we were talking about this morning down. Uh right up front there's a crap ton of artwork here. Right into the story. It's decent. About add-ons, the all digital tier, limited edition paper covers. Preston really lets you know what you're buying right up front. Jimmy Tyndall where's covers. The beanies? Where's the COVID masks? Where's yeah, Preston? Where's the where's the pasties? Where can I get a set of, of nipple pasties, Preston? Hmm? I need to see some Guinevere themed tassels. Yeah, that's what we need. Yeah, and he's got some good funding here. Five thousand bucks, not bad, Preston. You know, one thing you can say about Preston is the dude's prolific, man. Dude, dude's a comic book making machine. Indeed. So, story: Guinevere and the Divinity Factory explores a lot of tropes of the Roaring Twenties, understanding flapper parties, Lovecraftian monsters, futurism, Art Deco design elements, plant societies, and the perennial favorite ladies of questionable morality. Oh, look, in our first issue, which you can download for free, including a link, we found Guinevere in an addict healed through the power of magic. See, it's it's like chock full of story. Oh, Doodle Squatch, $10,000 gold. Yeah, that was the war party, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, war party's looking for 10000 so check that out. How much were they looking for the other one? Uh, the Dragon Wait, Rage. Dragon Rage? They're asking for six. That's not bad. But my, my question is, how are they affording all these add-ons on just six? I don't know. I just I just hope they get away from the add-ons, you know? Uh, add-ons I mean, t-shirts, like a, that's, that shit ain't cheap, especially if you only sell, like, two or three of them. They're either going to have, like, a huge inventory... I mean, maybe they're they're trying to, 
you know, get well above that and yeah. take all that stuff to cons and whatnot and sell, which that stuff will do great at cons. It will. It usually does. Yeah. Make a lower goal. Yeah. See, you, you do a lower goal and then you make the goal and you keep funding. Yeah. That's like what I did with Otis. Like I put it at $500 because that's the bare minimum I needed to print and ship a certain amount of books. Well, look at a. Uh, so 10 bucks on Preston's campaign gets you issues one through three PDF music bid in the wallpaper. So where Preston, where's your 20 bucks gets you the cover. So he's at the 20 buck tier too. Man, I hate Kickstarter's interface. Like, why does it, why does it do that? Because they're assholes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I okay, wish I, hey, I want to read all this stuff. Oh, wait, no, I'm hovering over. Can't do. Yeah, that. what the hell is this? Okay, ten bucks gets you the main cover delivered. So not just a PDF, you get a physical. Guinevere number one. Okay, so it sounds like the campaign is offering add-ons as a pilot program with Kickstarter. All right. Well, that's... that's and I like the $10 for. with free domestic shipping. That's a really good price right there. Okay. Pocket Jack says I'm correct. So, guys, check out Guinevere. Guinevere number four I'm really looking forward to. But if you want to get caught up for that issue, 10 bucks gets you caught up. That's pretty good, man. Okay, right in the middle of the screen. Oh, there we go. So that's what Preston's talking about. Very cool, man. Go to another campaign that doesn't need any help from us, but I'm interested in anyway. I don't care if he's on EVS's show or not. Starlight Cats. I love cats, so... This is this is from a guy who's clearly a professional. He's got some great looking art. He's got some cool cats on here. I mean, just look at that. It's really cute, you know. I love cats. I know. The cast. Look at this one, salty. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how I would imagine a salty a chomp cat. look too. Oh, that's funny, man. I mean, I know I can see his feet and everything, but at first it kind of looked like he was like in this kind of iron lung device. Yeah. Or he's just like that. Yeah. Jelly beans. He's running like oh. Bodoc. Yeah. This looks cool. I I'll probably get that. The get your cat drawn into the volume one, 800 bucks is a bit steep, but that's pretty cool. I'd pay like a hundred bucks for that, but I'm not the one running in this campaign. Uh, 25 bucks for, I'm guessing 48 pages. Is it 48 pages? Yep. That's the comic skate standard. So if you guys like cats and you don't mind comic skate and chain Davis and all that, Looks like he's got a good product for you. <sighs> Let's not pick on Dragon Rage anymore. No, I, I feel uh, yeah, I, I I like this book. I just backed it. I can't wait to read it. It looks really fantastic. And David Finch is a hell of a dude. He's very generous with his time. And if you guys are interested and can get past the tchotchkes and stuff, I think there's a really good comic book here. We're just, I, I think I was more upset about how the campaign was set up and just the pitch and stuff like that more than anything. Cause I think there is a really good comic book here to get past. Once you look past the, uh, the uh, very lukewarm pitch, but uh war party looks great too. Um, yeah. Trucks, <laughs> uh, you know, Guinevere, check that out. 17 days to go on that. I think there's some really good comic books out here. I think we could all help each other out. And, uh, Otis Stein, 1900 bucks doing great, man. Woo! I'm very. I, I was stoked about that because it actually jumped from I think it was like 1864 to 19 last night. And yeah, 
I scared the shit out of the messes because I was like, woo, like Ric Flair. I was like, hell yeah. Well, you're really only counting on making 500 bucks on this thing, weren't you? I mean, that's the, I w I'm hoping to make more, but that's the bare minimum it would take to print and ship books. Yeah. Yeah, like I just, put, <laughs> you know, manufacturing and shipping costs just right there. That was my baseline. Uh -huh. We actually won't see any profit until probably around maybe two two thousand dollars. No, I think you're right there, man. But I'm not in it for the profit. I just wanted to get a book out there, so you know, mission accomplished, man. Yeah. And you're going to ship as soon as it's done uh, campaigning, right? Yep. Yeah, and you really went out on a limb to do the uh, Blacklight cover, too. Yeah, uh, that's actually Damnation suggested that, because when he saw the uh, the cover right there that you're looking at, he's like, man, that would make a killer Blacklight poster. And then that little light bulb just kind of flickered over my head before it busted. And then it came back, and I was like... Oh, yeah, that is a good idea. Let me see what I can do. And, dude, that was a pain in the ass. Um, like, the company I ended up dealing with for the poster was great. It was finding that company because, like, I was Googling, like, you know, custom black light posters. I found one guy who, like, I guess he prints them by, does, like, screen printing by hand and he flocks them and everything. But that dude wanted, like, two grand just to do, like, I think it was, like, 30 posters. I was like, hell no. 30 grand. Yeah. Oh, stand. Yeah, that's a fantastic piece for the black light, man. It's just got like more than the art, like the mood transcends it somehow. Especially like the the yellow here and just it's really great, man. So excited. Yeah, I'm gonna have to migrate. Um now HG just told me about this campaign, Iron Face. So you wanna talk about a good pitch? It's Jason Voorhees meets the Terminator. Which the Terminator already was kind of a Jason Voorhees, but I mean it's pretty cool anyway. Update. Let's see. Story. Who is Iron Face? What is Iron Face? This looks like a good put together campaign. I'll have to look at this myself, but just judging from the artwork, and uh, it's already been. See, and he puts the swag where it's supposed to be to the side. It's a big campaign. Good art. Oh, it looks great, man. Yeah, I'll have to look into this one, do another morning show, talking about other stuff. I'm I think we said a lot this morning. I hope no one gets any hurts feelings from watching the stream. <laughs> but yeah, we'll check this out another time. But check out Guinevere, check out Starlight Cats, check out War Party, Dragon Rage, and uh <laughs> and, uh Yeah, man, I'm I'm excited about comic books. Not so much t shirts and masks, but I think uh, it's been fun talking about this stuff. Uh, yeah, closing thoughts, Skinny? Oh, yeah, we're supposed to talk about our new show coming up. Oh, yeah. That could be our closing thoughts. Yeah. So uh, if you guys haven't been paying attention, we've been doing uh, – we've been on a hiatus from, I kind of believe, for a few weeks, uh, mostly due to scheduling, and uh, I, I've i been sick. Uh, I think I've had a run-in with COVID, uh, somebody that I've had – come over and hang out with me was quarantined for a couple of days. He came up negative. I haven't been tested yet, so I got to go check that out. But I have just been sick as hell. I haven't been able to do any kind of YouTube. And uh, so we've been on hiatus and we thought about restructuring the show anyway, after we uh, encountered Big Nut. So we're thinking we're going to do our next, I kind of believe is going to be Chemtails instead. Yeah. For the more outlandish stuff. Yeah, we, we may bounce back and forth depending on our mood between doing, I kind of believe, and Chemtails. Or we might just go ahead with Chemtails. But Chemtails is going to be more of a big nut and uh, stuff like that and have some fun. Yeah, we still want the uh, 
you know, the stoner humor kind of thing. And, uh, you know, the Joe Rogan, oh, what is the meaning of life stuff we tried to go for on? I kind of believe, but I think Kim Tales would be a little more laid back. Yeah, not me too. Let's see. Oh, we're getting some more comments. What do y'all think about swag being off to the side as an add on tier? Yeah, that's what I want the swag to be. If I'm that excited about your book, you know, I'm glad it's available. Just don't make it the, don't let it clutter up the page. Sell a comic book and then well, if I like it enough. I'll yeah. buy your t-shirts. Yeah, Matt, if you were here earlier, uh, I was actually talking about like those, those items shouldn't have even had tiers. They, they should have just been add-ons yeah. for any tier that you choose. There's just, it's, it's not necessary and just bogs everything. There's just too much going on. Way too much, man. Let's see. Because, uh, like I was pointing out, you would have to, like, if you wanted all that add-on stuff, you would have to back the face mask, do all of that, finish that, come back, back the beanie, then do all that, come back, t-shirt, yada, yada, yada. It's just a big pain in the ass for your customer when it could easily just be, okay, I'm going to back the book. Hey, would you like to, you know, get some add-ons? And then you just click. Yeah, I want the beanie. I want the face mask. And then you get them all at once. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's just weird. yeah we, we, we'll talk about werewolves and vampires and stuff on Chemtails. All that stuff's on the market. We're just going to have a little more fun with it. But uh, Lorenzo is also on hiatus as well. Uh, he's taking a break from it. Yeah. Nothing think, bad. Well, I think Lorenzo himself said he didn't have a lot of time because he does a lot of streams on his own. And I kind of believe honestly needs a bit of research and I don't think he had the time for it. So if you guys don't see him, he's been abducted by the mothership. The Judean mothership. The Sumerians uh, are having him translate runes before he comes back. Yeah, so exactly. He- but, you know, and it also didn't feel right to do. I kind of believe with him going on a temporary hiatus too. So, yeah, that might be part of the impetus for Chemtails as well. But Chemtails will be fun, and you guys should watch it. And uh, we'll probably have some new uh, music to open up with and goof around. And uh, we probably need a third, too. Yeah, well, we need it to be a menage a trois. Yeah. And my liquor bottle does not count as another person, sadly. Sadly. Yes, and I'm on a drink. I tried, I tried to ride in the carpool lane with a gallon of vodka in the passenger seat, but apparently, you know, there's laws about open containers and being within reach of the driver. Yeah. That's right. Well, guys, you can start, drive, just park first. Yeah, and get out and go drink in your house. But, uh, guys, it's been a while since I've done a morning show, so it's nice to have a little bit of an audience here and uh, hopefully do this more regularly and uh, just hopefully help people get funded and, uh, even more than that, help uh, comic books be a thing still. And I think we got a real chance with uh, doing this crowdfunding thing to ignore the bad parts of the big two and celebrate the stuff from the big two. That's still good. Yeah. And check out all the books we talked about. Like, you know, we did pick a part. Uh, Dragon Rage, but it still looks like a fantastic book. It has great looking art. Yeah, undoubtedly. Giving constructive criticism. Yeah, I hope it comes across as constructive, if a bit harsh. Um, I backed it. I hope everyone in here takes a look at it and considers backing it too. I can't wait to read it. And uh, maybe, maybe bigger and better things are coming from Page One Comics, Jimmy Reyes, and check out Dave Finch. Uh, all these guys are really great dudes in the comic scene that uh, we need more of, frankly. You know, the favorite two that we kind of looked over, which we really didn't look over the other one, um, but that war party, man, that one looked killer. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I get another paycheck, I'm probably going to back that one. But I try not to back too many campaigns on uh, one check. So I'll definitely, definitely <laughs> consider backing that one and keep an eye on it. But um, thanks, everyone, for being here, and thanks for coming on this morning, Skinny. It's nice that I uh, caught you on a, on a day off. It's, uh, it's only because I puked on my way to work, so they wouldn't let me come in. <sighs> well, you should puke more off. If you want. Hmm? 
What? Your and third person should be Pootie Pie. Well, uh, if if he wants to come on, he's welcome. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. we have a we have an okay show. He'll be like, "Oh, their show's pretty decent." It's just okay. okay. Yeah. It's I. Skinny got Ebola. Did you get Ebola? Uh, why'd y'all bring that up? <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later.